In the early days of the Russian Federation, the military started developing a coastal defense system known as the Bastion P. With a maximum range of 300 kilometers, the mobile platform is both a robust defense system and a potent offensive weapon. The Bastion P, or K-300P, is armed with Yukon anti-ship supersonic cruise missiles capable of traveling at Mach 2.5. Remarkably, the platform can launch consecutive missiles within three seconds, all of which can operate together to carry out precise attacks. While the first examples were delivered in 2010, the mobile weapon system did not come to the spotlight until 2021, when Russia deployed its new piece of engineering on an island chain in the northwest Pacific Ocean, an area disputed between the great nation and its neighbor, Japan. And although Russia was careful to establish its new base on an uninhabited territory in Matua in the Kuril Islands, the Japanese were not pleased at all. The system. Development of the K-300P, or Bastion P, began in the 1990s as a joint venture between the Russian NPO Mashinostroyenia and the Belarusian Technosoyuz Projekt companies. As the P letter in its designation indicates, the system is a mobile platform conceived for coastal defense. The missile system, NATO reporting name SSC-5 Stuga, is equipped with 3M55 Yukon to anti-ship supersonic cruise missiles. The platform is primarily intended to control straits, sea lines of communications, and territorial waters, as well as to protect coastal infrastructures like naval bases and strategic installations. In addition, the system is more than suitable for defending shores against amphibious landings. Its leading role involves engaging various surface ships, as it can take out virtually any kind, including carrier battle groups, convoys, and landing craft. The weapons missiles can sometimes even target surface objectives. A Bastion P battery is typically composed of one to two command and control vehicles, placed on the Kamaz 43101 6x6 truck, one support vehicle, and four launcher vehicles. Remarkably, the launcher vehicles can be located as far as 25 kilometers away from the C-2 ones. The launcher carries two P-800 Onyx Yakont SSN-26 Strobile supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles, the same one used as the basis for the BrahMos cruise missile. This weapon has a 200-250 kilogram warhead and can presumably carry nuclear or conventional warheads. Its range varies from 120 kilometers at low, low flight trajectories to 300 kilometers at high, low flight trajectories, and it is fired vertically from the launchers by using a solid fuel rocket booster for initial acceleration. Later on, a liquid fuel ramjet sustains cruising at Mach 2.5. The missiles. The P-800 Onyx is a fire-and-forget type missile that uses satellite guidance at the flight's initial stage. However, it switches to active radar guidance upon approaching the target. By using GLONASS and then changing to radar, the missile can fly at 14,000 meters before descending to sea-skimming altitude, or barely 5 meters near the final stage. These attributes prove helpful up to sea state 7. In addition, the airflow ejects the booster when completely burned out after the two-stage propulsion process of solid fuel-based acceleration and liquid fuel-based cruising. Furthermore, the P-800 Onyx uses Russian sea-skimming cruise missile technology, which allows it to operate at minimum altitude at the end of its trajectory. As the missile can maneuver at supersonic speed before the collision, close-in weapon systems might prove ineffective against it. Besides, it can be used in electronic countermeasures environments, considerably complicating its interception by current air defense systems. Using a combination of autopilot, INS, a radio altimeter for mid-course guidance, a monopulse dual-mode active-passive seeker for terminal guidance, and modified software in the Bastion's guidance system, the missile can dive into stationary land targets, accurately striking programmed coordinates. Impressively, Yakonsk can execute joint attacks, 
with one missile flying at 5,000 meters to transmit targeting data to another missile flying at sea-skimming altitude, thus surrounding the given target. The Vehicle The missile system's sensors, weapons, and the reload and support means are mounted on the wheeled chassis. Based on the Belarusian MZKT-7930 8x8 heavy high-mobility chassis, the launcher vehicle has excellent cross-country mobility and is able to operate on rough terrain. Also, the TEL vehicle needs a complement of three, an operator, a driver, and a commander. The missiles can be readied within five minutes of halting the vehicle. Afterward, they can be fired in two to five second intervals. In addition, the mobile launcher can remain on active standby over the next three to five days, or even a whole month, provided it is accompanied by a combat duty support vehicle. The entire battery, consisting of four mobile vertical launchers equipped with two Yakont missiles each, one to two command, control, and communications vehicles, one support vehicle, and four transloaders carrying up to three missiles each, is controlled from the main naval headquarters. Among them, the command post vehicle is provided with a monolit target acquisition radar, while the missile transport vehicle can operate autonomously if necessary, and reload the launcher within 30 or 40 minutes. Meanwhile, the launcher vehicles can fire consecutive missiles within 3 seconds, and the missiles can take up to 5 minutes to hit a target at a maximum range of 300 kilometers. Finally, the Bastion P can launch missiles from locations at sea level or as high as a thousand meters of altitude, and its range allows it to fire from up to 10 kilometers inland from the coast. Deployment As far back as 2004, the Russian military operated a broadly similar coastal defense system. The Ball system used a significantly less capable KH-35 anti-ship cruise missile, though it had a capacity for eight missiles per launcher vehicle. The Bastion P did not enter service with the Russian armed forces until 2010, when the first three examples were delivered to the military. These first systems are currently in use with the Black Sea Fleet. Several more units were eventually delivered to the Black Sea Fleet and the Northern Fleet. In early March of 2011, it was reported that Russia would deploy the vehicles on the Kareel Islands of the Far East, a threat that took several years to conclude. The Russian Navy's Coast Guard troops then received at least 20 Ball and Bastion P missile systems from 2013 through 2020. Early in 2014, one missile system was deployed to Crimea to deter U.S. Navy ships in the region, but it wasn't reported until March of 2015. That same year, Admiral Vladimir Korolev, the Northern Fleet commander, claimed that coastal forces would receive new complexes to support already existing deployments. Then, in late 2016, Russia announced the deployment of Bastion P systems in the country as part of the military intervention in Syria. By launching Onyx missiles at land targets, a previously undisclosed land attack capability was demonstrated, expanding the potential of the coastal defense system. Japan's anger. In 2021, the Russian military deployed the mobile system in the Kuril Islands. The incident was significant, given that the chain in the Northwest Pacific Ocean is disputed by Russia and Japan. According to the Ministry of Defense, the act signaled the start of deployments from a new military base on Matua, an uninhabited volcanic island not claimed by Japan. A ministry statement said the deployment would provide thorough, quote, monitoring of the adjacent waters and straits. While the number of Bastion P's was not specified, a video issued by the ministry showed several units moving ashore from the Pacific Fleet amphibious landing vessels and patrolling the island's shores. Moreover, Machua now houses new facilities that will enable the deployment and support of personnel and equipment, and it was confirmed that the military personnel started duties from the base while, quote, carrying out planned combat training activities. Japan has expressed mounting concerns about this as the Asian giant performed extensive naval maneuvers around the islands. 
It is yet to be seen how the situation will unfold. Thanks for watching our video. Please hit the like button and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more military-inspired content, and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.